speaking of cabs, then let's shift over into what you can talk about with one up. I know it's always like <laughs> stepping into somebody else's party and talking about it because mm -hmm. we should be talking to them about it. And hopefully we'll be getting David on back. Um, I'm waiting to find out when that'll be, but uh, in which case mm -hmm. we can have some of these. But speak to what you're able to, but with regards to the response that was with the three cabs that you have guys have announced, obviously pre-orders have been like, you know, the golden ticket and they're mm. not even in stores yet. How has the response uh, surprised you guys? Uh, it's been overwhelming. It, I'm probably the most optimistic pinball guy on the planet, or at least here at Zen, uh, for thinking what the potential is for this game on a global basis and with virtual pinball cabinets. It exceeded even my expectation, <laughs> just to <laughs> put it mildly. We can, I mean, it's a it's a good problem to have, but I don't like seeing people trying to get units on eBay for two thousand dollars. Right. You know? I mm -hmm. want I want everybody who wants one of these to have one. That's that was the reason why we did it was because I know everybody wants a pinball machine. It just needs to be sized right and priced right, and that was the goal. And we need to address this. Um, and Arcade One Up is addressing it, but we need to get more units in the market. Does it mm -hmm. uh, does it affect the choices that you guys make going forward for? Uh, what you would potentially want to see in newer, or, or I should say newer, uh, more arcade one-up cabs, not the three that you guys have made, but building more cabs for the future, or even just the idea of, like you said, there was the idea of, okay, can we add games to it? All that. Because obviously, yeah. just within this past year, the, the three-quarter scale market, all of a sudden there was four products, everybody doing a different thing. I'm sure that you guys have been aware of what people's comments have been regarding what they like, what they don't like, what they wish to have. Has, has that altered kind of the, the plans yeah. going forward? Yeah, I'll be honest. Like I kind of was looking at the launch of Arcade One Up as a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. You know, Let's find mm -hmm. out if the market really does want these. Let's find out if we can move them at retail. Let's find out what uh, people want to do with the machine. And a lot of our assumptions were confirmed in a lot of cases with the demand was just, like I said, out, out, you know, totally beyond what we thought. Um, and so, you know, what I, what I don't want to ever have the perception be is like that we just want to sell somebody who bought, who took a chance on the Gen 1 unit, just be forced to buy another one to have the best stuff. So, you know, um, I want to make sure that if you've invested in a unit and we do updates and there's new content, like you should be able to get that. Of course, these wave one units, you can, you know, with a, with a dongle, you can, you can try to take it online. Plenty of people are showing you how to mod it or, or, you know, take it, go online. That's okay. Is it optimal? No, it's not the best user experience. It should just work out of the box to go mm -hmm. online to do stuff. But this is a platform we have to take seriously. Um, it's another, again, I said, I don't like building platforms, but <laughs> here we go. We've got, another, we we've another, got another segment now to our portfolio. We've got PC, console, mobile, VR, and now virtual pinball cabinets, which we absolutely have to take seriously and support long-term. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a chunk of money that people fork out and I want to make sure that they're happy with it. So uh, our job is software and our job is, you know, to make sure it's the best experience. Arcade one Up's job is hardware and making sure it's, it's available. Um, and we need to work together to, to make sure this, this is awesome for players. I guess that probably leads into a, a question that I had, which based on that answer, you may not be able to address, but it, what is actually happening uh, between Zen and RK1 up to address the supply issues um, and try and get these units into people's hands? Yeah, well, what we're experiencing partially as well is uh, some global issues that we have no control over. There's a chip shortage right now. There's a glass shortage as well. Um, right. And these are things that I don't know. I sit over here in software land, so I'm like, I don't understand stuff like that. But then, you know, you, you see this report and they're like, well, we, we only have this much glass and we can only get these many chips. And, and this space is exploding actually. And, and it's, you know, you look at just monitors and television screens and all the, all the different things that require, you know, glass and sort of these raw materials. It's a global demand. So Arcade went up is competing with everybody. For, the, for these sort of materials. Um, we're trying to get creative. You know, um, I would love to see manufacturing potentially done in multiple locations around the world. And that way we can have better distribution globally. 
Um, mm-hmm. These are things that I suggest. Of course, I don't know. Any- <laughs> yeah, it's kind of out know. of your hands. <laughs> like you said, uh, you have to get John D on. Not the hardware. Yeah. Need to get John D on, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They, up, they, they know. They, <laughs> they work hard to, to try to fix this. I mean, their business is about physical product. So mm-hmm. they've got that end sewn up. They, they would be doing all they could to yeah. actually try and alleviate supply issues, obviously. But, you know, with the, um, with, I guess stay tuned. With regards to software, though, maybe you can address some of the things that uh, I know that some of the things that I've been reading, because I don't have one of these cabs yet, uh, but people have been saying that they wish the accelerometer they were able to uh, uh, set, basically, uh, or recalibrate. Um, I know that in terms of the display that they wish that they were able to be able to, uh, you know, change the brightness on it, you know, make, maybe make it less washed out if they were experiencing that. And I know that that would be built in to the software that you guys are doing. Um, but then I'm even hearing things like that apparently whitewater, is, for some people, it is a stuttery experience. Mm-hmm. Um, is that things that then you're able to look at and say, hey, we want to do a, a firmware patch and be able to put in? Yeah, th- that's exactly what would happen. Firmware patch, you know, we can make that available for download, throw it on a drive, put it in, uh, update the game. So, yeah, you know, that was one of the things we knew. And, and again, you know, we go through a rigorous QA testing process and, and we, knowing that we're shipping without like, you know, built in Wi-Fi connectivity and that we would require people to go through a very manual process to update um, was again, a decision we, we just didn't feel good about having an online presence when it just was, would have been, we were just weren't ready. We couldn't build it and yeah. we, we just didn't know. So, mm. um, yeah, we need to, we need to do an update. Um, there's some, you know, we hear the requests for these updated features. Uh, so it's like everything, like this, this, this list of red things that we want to fix. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of imagine because I know that obviously some of the things that Arcade One Up has done with their past arcade machines, um, I mean, just even things like with their volume control, you know, it used mm-hmm. to be just high and low volume, and then they wound up doing that little switch to just make it, you know, be a progressive bar. Um, but that was obviously then when they did other generations. But some of these things, I was like, well, it's not a hardware thing; it's purely a software that you guys could go ahead and do if it was something that you felt needing addressed. So there's the question, though. Is it that Arcade 1-Up has to say, hey, we need this addressed? Or is it something that you can go to Arcade 1-Up and be like, hey, we would like to address this? Well, that's a good question. I mean, usually when we hear about the issues, it's addressed to both of us, right? And then yeah. I, I'm informed of it. So it's not really <laughs> like we need to go to them or they need to go to us. It's just, yeah, we need to get together, make a concerted effort, make sure we wrap everything into one patch because I don't want to do, have to do multiples. Um, and decide what the delivery mechanism will be, make sure it's well communicated, make sure it's not messing up other stuff. Like we need to go through a rigorous test again. You go through an entirely di- new QA process because like you release a firmware update and you screw oh, something else up. And then, right. mm-hmm. oh, now the game doesn't boot up at all. You know what I mean? So like- Gotcha. And then you have okay. to scramble to fix that problem. It's like whack-a-mole. It's software. Anybody who knows it, yeah. I mean, yeah. Jared, you know what I'm talking about. And, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, has there been, since these things are exploding, uh, have you had licensors now come to you and be like, we want part of this. We want our own cabinet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, they don't even necessarily, they're like, can we just get a cabinet even if, if our game's not ready? You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> can, we just put our work, can we just have it in the office? Can we just have it in our house? Uh, that's the cool thing. I mean, that's why we all love this hobby in this game, right? I mean, like, it, it it's like, one of, that's one of the fun things. Um, so, yeah, it's bringing... People that we haven't even made games for yet. <laughs> they just want a machine. So. It's like, they shut up and take my money. They're throwing the money at the screen right, at you. Right. They just want it. Yeah. It's not a bad problem to have. Hey, um, so we all know that Zen is all about um, like using past experiences to influence future decisions. And I'm sure that you've got a lot of um, uh, lessons learned from the whole process of releasing cabinets. If you could change one thing, and I know it's probably hard because there's probably a lot of things you would change. If you could only change one thing with the way that you've produced this first range of cabinets, what do you think that would be? It's a good question because I think the product is good. I think the services, mm-hmm. we should have built in a, a service element. And maybe, you know, because I, I'm not going to pat myself on the back, but maybe I will just a little bit here because I've been believing in this 
for many years. You know, um, it was a hard sell internally just to turn on vertical monitor support. And, and right. that spawned a whole overnight movement from people building things. Um, I believed in VP cabs with Brad over there in uh, Ohio and worked with him to get him onto a uh, shark tank mm. and he got a deal done. And, mm. and I was like, okay, like we got something. I've been hard selling this along internally for many, many years. And I knew that we would see this result, but I didn't push hard enough to, uh, to, to push for the service element. So I think, you know, yes, we got the product. Yes, we see the demand, but I do think that being able to service the machine is something I would have changed. Mm. I'm guessing that uh, you hear a lot of people asking, oh, wave two, I'm going to wait for wave two. Uh, the fact that these things are still having a hard time even getting into a retail spot, I imagine uh, that's going to carry us through the end of the year just with these three that we have. Um, but obviously, Arcade 1UP is known for incrementally improving their cabinets down the line. Uh, what do you see as goals that you would want implemented in a cabinet uh, of the future? I want an online store. Okay. I want people to be able to easily get more content. If you know Somebody who invests in a $500 brand new Xbox, they want to play a bunch of games on it. Mm. Someone who's buying a $600 pinball machine, I, I, I think that they want to play a bunch of games on it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think they want to play in tournaments. I think they want to be connected to friends. They want a pinball FX style uh, you know, experience. So, you know, that's what I would like to see um, in terms of software support and the user experience. In terms of hardware, um, I think that there's a place in the market for a more robust unit, you know, high, you know, like an arcade one-up premium or something like that. Mm -hmm. I also yeah. think there's a huge part of the market that still can't afford the $600 price point or they don't have the space and they want maybe something that's more on their, on their desktop. I want to fill the gaps, man. Like, I want everybody to play our game because I think it's fun <laughs> and I want to give it to them yeah. in a format that they can experience it in a way that they might not have done before that. I mean, that's really what I want to accomplish. So uh, that's what I think in the future we could, we could see happen. 